All right, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here again. My name is Antique Alicia, and it's such a joy to share this information with you. I know for me, I went through years really beating myself up mentally, trying to make sense of why things happened. It would keep me up at night. My mind would race so much just on like the simple shit, like um, my to-do list. It was always friggin' overwhelming, and most of it was just this like cycle in my head, and it took me many, many years to learn how to control, um, it, for lack of a better word, like this demon that was just beating me up every day, wondering what was wrong with me and trying to fix everything. And it was exhausting, literally, physically exhausting, mentally exhausting. My adrenals were, were shot. The stories I would tell myself, I was constantly trying to overcome. And I know that this ability now allows me to relate to most, if not all, of my clients who are going through this battle within between their ears, really, and what the mind does. And what I've learned is that there are some simple ways that if we shift and we train our brain rather than our brain training us, we can find freedom. And when I say freedom, I mean like peace of mind, freedom. Like I like myself freedom. And it doesn't mean that the egoic mind edging God out is, as Wayne Dyer says, isn't there, right? Like it totally shows up for me. I have my weaker days, right? Um, I also get triggered still. I have had a full crazy life of um, overcoming trauma, unfortunately, uh, to, to own this within myself. And to share this with you, I unfortunately have experienced most, if not all of it. And I, I know how to cope with it now. I know how to train my subconscious mind to not have to be mean and not have to have a meaning for everything. Meaning I can heal and let go of old crap without sifting through it and smelling the shit and tasting the shit and rubbing it all over myself um, before I decide to shower it off for lack of a better analogy. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. There it is. There it is. So let's bring you some peace of mind. So in the first segment, I explained your mind, your brain, and how it works. Now I'm going to explain why we get... Um, stress and ha and belief systems and what our beliefs are really about. And I'm also going to share pieces of my theology and, and my methodology with you that um, if it resonates with you, fantastic. And if it doesn't, I just want to tell you that you're going to find exactly what does resonate with you someday. Just keep seeking it, right? Keep seeking it because I might not be a perfect fit for you. Um, however, if it does resonate with you, just hear it and feel it and own it for yourself and, and allow yourself to open to more possibility with, within this. So what I found is that trauma affects the why center. So the memories that we have, the things that we create, our understanding of life creates our perception. And that perception of life is how life shows up for you. So therefore, your life is mirroring your subconscious beliefs. So changing your subconscious beliefs is going to, by default, change your life because it's going to change your perception. And you're going to be able to see and experience different doors that are open. You're going to have more clarity on doors that are shut. And the less time that you have to do seeking out, well, why did that happen in 1982 to me? That wasn't fair. And the less you have to prove all of that stuff. Also, the more confident that you feel. And there's a couple things that are really important in, in this segment, okay? So, are you ready? I'm ready. First thing to know is that the struggle inside of your brain is all memory. You've already survived. This is a subconscious struggle. Unless, right now, you are in an abusive, traumatizing experience 
Um, and if that's so, I urge you to go seek professional help. Like there is um, safe houses, there's, you know, there's a step there. There's safe houses and there's therapists. I, um, I love therapy. It's just not my step. I help people put their lives back together and reclaim that after they've already talked through it. So if that's you and you're still facing it every day, then um, this is different because that's a conscious, that's conscious. It's right there, right? However, if it's not happening, you're out of the situation, you're in survival mode, then this is a subconscious deal, right? And I do it here because it's, it's in the middle. And it's memories that you can pull up and you're like, oh, well, that's just because of that. Oh, no, that's just because of that. And oh, well, he feels that way because my ass is too fat or whatever, right? I'm just giving examples that I hear from clients. Um, and how you get over that is by letting go of the need to know why. I'm gonna say that again, because it's really easy and really profound. So how you get over that is you let go of needing to know the reason why. And why this is so important is because oftentimes the why requires an answer outside of yourself. When we have been victimized, and if you're of the belief that there is no victimization, that victim is a bad word, I just want to welcome you to open the experience just a little bit. Okay, if you've been through a trauma and you were victimized, there is a noun definition of a victim. And if you were victimized in that moment, you were a victim, period. And victim is not a bad word, it's a happening, right? To stay in victim mindset, meaning that you get stuck in a place where Everybody is trying to beat you up. Everybody is out to get you. Um, there is no safe haven. There's no safe place. Um, the world is just bad. Like that's stuck in victimization, but that's a subconscious memory, right? That you can shift and you can change. Now, out of victimization, there's survivalhood. And survival is also stuck in that memory. However, you have a little bit more power right? You might not like the victimization, but you can kind of see it now. You, um, you're willing to look at yourself and take ownership, right? A victim has no ownership. It's very outside in. Um, a survivor has an inside out relationship with the world. Um, but you can be stuck there where you're, you are unconsciously, we'll get to the PTSD in a minute, but you're unconsciously creating this cycle of like crap shit to look at trying to figure out why it keeps happening to you. Now all of that was really profound. You might want to listen to it a little bit again, but, um, but that's what's happening. So how do you shift these beliefs? How do you change your perception of what's going on in the outside world and help it come in? I'm going to give you two things. One is really friggin' deep. This is actually, um, the basis of everything I know, and when we work privately together, this is where um, transformation happens. So there's shift that happens in mindset work. There's transformation that happens after that. There's resolution that happens in mindset work. There's a transcension that happens on the soul level. So. The subconscious mind, some people call it ego. Um, it is edging God out, but it's also your personal God. That's fucking bold. Uh, I have a teacher that um, is um, teaching most of the courses in my PhD program, and, and she says that there are a billion people in the world and there's a billion gods because no matter what faith or religion you are there is an understanding that only you have there's a personal relationship that only you have and the unconscious mind 
is your personal relationship with God. And the other flip side of that is everybody is God. So how you believe, what you believe comes and shows themselves to you. So to shift your relationship with God, to shift your understanding of God to be more loving, be more present, be more you, be through your higher self and your intuit knowing and, and to demand and command from that place of oneness. You know, for me, I'm Christian and John 17, like just calls to me and, and it's Jesus's prayer. And he says, um, you know, let them know that they are one with me as I am one with you speaking to God. Right. And, and so it's like, Oh, let, let me know that, and that, that is in me. And it's standing in that and loving yourself from that holy place of the image of God within you that is so personal. And then that begins to transpire outside. But it all starts with this understanding of your subconscious. And if I be so bold, that's why we are trapped in it. That's why the subconscious is so powerful. Because what the subconscious puts out, those memories, the meaning making, is truly, truly what you receive back and how you perceive the world. But it's also your faith. Okay, that's number one. Number two is your subconscious mind can be reprogrammed. So you can change your definition of God into a loving, omnipotent, beautiful, protecting, abundant. Um, you, you can change your perception of yourself into a child of the creator, hey, right? And a loved child, a beloved child, of, uh, all of this stuff, like that perception you can shift. And how you do that is a few ways. I'm going to share with you two of my favorite. One is active visualization. And what that is, is utilizing your conscious mind to create a scenario that you really, really desire and feel it and sense it and really get into it and start creating that as the reality in your subconscious brain. Because remember, I told you in video one, you can't, um, your subconscious cannot differentiate between reality what's really happening and a vision so you can focus on a vision or a picture or an image that is what you would like to be and literally start creating brain waves of subconscious to build that faith within yourself and it will cover up and eliminate the other stuff now to eliminate the old paradigm in your mind oftentimes it's attached to feeling and um most memories are pulled up with a vibration, a feeling attached to them. And that's why the next power zone is vibrational. It is your vibe, your emotional set point, how you deal with emotions. So if you want to get that mini course, definitely do that. If you're, you know, seeing and oh my gosh, it all goes together. And my body is being affected. My mind's being affected. My emotions are being affected. My spirit's being affected. I need to reclaim all of me. Then look into my amazing you program and we'll do all of it. So you don't have to jump around from piece to piece. That's what I did for 20 years in order to put this together for you now. So you don't have to. Um, however, to do this, I found a couple things that are really popular that you can do. And it is EFT tapping is one of my favorites. And to do that, you are going to allow yourself to see the issue. And it starts with, even though such and such is happening, even though my mind is racing and I can't get any sleep, all I do is stress. I still love and accept myself. It's just a common one for my clients. So you, this is activates all your meridian lines. This is a very physical, emotional, and mental practice, even though this is happening. And then you'll go through however you feel. This is a top anchoring point. And you say, I just don't know what to do. My mind never shuts up. 
all I do is think negative thoughts and try to turn it off and nothing's worked. I've tried all of those affirmations for years and nothing has worked. I still am suffering. I still have flashbacks. I still have pain. I still have a shitty relationship. I'm still not making the money that I really want to make. Like all of this pain I'm feeling, I'm so sad about it. And let your emotions come up. I'm so sad about it underneath here. I just don't know what to do, right? And you're going to go through this. Um, always measure like whatever the belief is that has come up. Measure it like on a scale from zero to 10. How powerful is it right now in me? How much chaos is it creating in my life? And do this through and through. Now, oftentimes when doing EFT, um, some people say, oh, you have to go through here. I have done probably six certifications in different forms of EFT and work with many people around it. And you definitely don't have to do it in any order. Um, you can do your fingertips here. Um, there's meridian points at the bottom of your fingertip that you can do if you're at work or something like that. Um, you can just simply tap this point. Um, you know, just start with that intention. Even though this is, I'm willing to love myself. I'm willing to love myself even though. Meaning that you're willing to look that you are a beautiful child of God. You were made in the image of God. You are perfect. You know, despite whatever belief system is happening. And then go through whatever it is till you feel some relief. I highly, for trauma clients, highly, 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 highly do not recommend doing what pretty much everybody promotes on the internet, which is doing a positive round afterwards of what you want. And why that is, is because if you are not ready, if your subconscious and unconscious has layers to whatever belief system is, it is, if it's been affirmed time and time again for, you know, your whole life, and you're not to the very base of it yet, if you put a positive band-aid on top of it, what's gonna come back at you is a whole lot of shit. And it's gonna feel like, well, this isn't working, my mindset work isn't working, nothing is friggin' working for me, nothing is better for me, why is this pain so much? And it's gonna feel like PTSD, really. It's gonna activate that subconscious stuff. So give yourself a break. Do the negative, feel some relief, and you know, you might have to do the same topic a couple times, right? You might do four hours of tapping. You might do eight. You might do 16 hours of tapping before you feel relief. I mean, the belief system has been a lifetime, right? So you might have this before you feel relief. And when you do, you go, even though, even though my mind's been racing and I just didn't know what to do about it, I totally love and accept myself. And I'm ready to control those thoughts when it's racing. Hmm. I think I'll do an affirmation or a mantra, really connecting me to God. I'm giving you tips here, by the way. And that's just going to really affirm that I'm a child of God, that I'm a beautiful, beautiful goddess. And when I'm up all night, I'm just going to think that thought over and over and over again. Because this isn't really a big deal anymore. I'm not really that concerned about my body and my mind running ragged anymore. All that stuff on my to-do list, it's going to get done. <sighs> I'm so happy I got the Amazing You program because now I know exactly how to manage my time. And I'm not stressed anymore. I'm feeling better. right? And it's all good. You'll hold your hands here at the end and you'll say peace. <sighs> Take a breath and recognize what comes up either from your subconscious or your unconscious mind and tap on that next. All right, again, many layers might come up. So give yourself some time when you're going to do EFT work. Um, I love this practice because it gives that instant result and freedom. You feel your body, your physical body, your emotional body, and your mental body all go, <sighs> it definitely, the, the meridian points start reprogramming your unconscious mind and, and you find relief. And this is so beautiful.
when we work together, we create whole programs around this together. We work together. I give you assignments that um, are very direct to help you break through these barriers and these beliefs from everything from not feeling comfortable in your skin to making more money. And we, you know, everything in between, calling in your soulmate, belief systems about relationships, being angry at God and figuring all of that out. Like, like there's so many layers that we get to work with and utilize EFT. I highly recommend it and absolutely love it. So I hope that you got a lot from this system um, and that you've enjoyed this segment. Next, we're going to go through PTSD and flashbacks and how to cope with them. I'm going to invite you into a very special club.